I'm here in Kentucky. For the most part, all is quiet. Far enough away from the city, where the politics really don't affect me. And the virus stuff, well, the only time I have to deal with that is when I'm up at the mailbox place or God forbid I have to go to Walmart. But what I do have to contend with is the wildlife. Deers, hogs, every now and then a dog man, but mainly the Bigfoots. Now, not used to being around Bigfoots, then it's pretty frightening. However, I grew up around these people. Yes, I call them people because that's what my daddy called them, the people of the hollows. Now, for the most part, those people of the hollows stay isolated in their areas until there's a problem. Problem being defined as other predators that come into the area or if there's a problem with the family unit and structure. And those events can be completely confusing for people who are not used to being around Bigfoots. Why? Because you have no clue as to what's going on and we as humans tend to treat everything as a threat. Now with that said, I started to see this male Bigfoot every day. Real big fella, about 10 feet tall. He would just be walking around in a circle in the wood lines. And he looked a lot like he was pissed off, just mumbling and talking to himself. Did I perceive it as a problem? Now the first lesson you learn being around the Bigfoots is if they not bothering you, don't bother them. Treat them like any other person. You never know what the hell they got going on in their world, just like they never know what the hell we have going on in ours. So I leave them alone, stay away from them, but I keep an eye on them. Then one evening, I'm out at my cow pasture and find one of my cows laid out next to the fence. And the closer I get, she's bleeding heavily and prolapsed. This cow was not calving. Now listen, when I get right up on that heifer, I see there's semen everywhere. Two days later, I find another one of my heifers. It's not calving. It's not in the process of calving, but the same condition. So my son and I decide we're going to stake out the pasture at night. We're out there, 1 a.m., night vision goggles on. And over the fence jumps that same Bigfoot, chases down one of my cows, and starts fucking it. Listen, my son and I are sitting there looking at this, and I said, oh, hell no. You're not finna come over here fucking my cows and costing me all this money. Now, I'm climbing out of the truck, taking shots, shooting just above his head, but he ain't stopping. So we turn on the headlights, start to run down on him. My son is hanging out the window, shooting over his head. Listen to me, and only when he saw the headlights from my truck running down on him, Did this Bigfoot stop ramming my cow, turn, and jump back over the fence? See, right then and that's when I realized I had a major, major problem on my hands because there's no way that I can stay up every night and guard my cows in my pasture from these Bigfoots. So my wife and I came up with the idea of clearing the wood lines, kind of as a punishment for the Bigfoots encroaching on our property. So we did it. We out there cutting down trees, dragging them off when these big huge gigantic chunks of logs come flying through the air bouncing on the ground landing right next to us then the screaming starts next to growling and the tree shaking now understand i'm pretty sure i done pissed this bigfoot off but what he didn't understand was he done pissed me off because he's cost me thousands of dollars getting my heifers fixed having veterinarians come to the property so at this point in time we got us an issue so my son and i head back to the house get extra rifles, get extra ammunition, and we get into the woods looking for this Bigfoot. 30 minutes pass, 45 minutes pass, an hour passes of us searching, trying to find this Bigfoot, but we can't find him. But like I done told you, these the people of the woods. Bigfoots ain't stupid. So I gets to talking to it. And I say, look, can't be coming down here fucking my cows. You and I ain't never had no problems. But if you keep coming around here fucking with me, I'm gonna have to kill you. My son is standing there looking at me like I'm absolutely crazy. But then, we can't see it, but you can clearly hear it walking away. Listen, a solid week passes, nothing has happened, the vet has been out there to tend to the cows, it's all quiet, until my granddaughter tells me that the hairy man reached into her window last night. Understand, it's one thing for these Bigfoots to be fucking my cows. But it's a whole nother story when you done touch my granddaughter. So that same day, I called my buddy Shane. We're tracking to those woods west of the pasture, 
violent broken tree limbs and branches and we travel for miles before we hit this thick wall of brush understand this wasn't a natural wall you can tell this had been stacked up over time because there was layers and layers of dead old foliage and briars on the ground but on the top it was this new and fresh green foliage understand none of it had roots into the ground it was clearly picked up and stacked in this area now Shane believed that this was one of their hunting blinds or one of their barriers they would stay there hide behind this area when a deer or a hog moved through they would hop out grab it and drag it to the other side now understand there was no way around it there was no way through it there was no way over it the only way to get through this was to get down on your stomach and crawl through the bottom and understand I'm pissed off so now I'm crawling rifle in hand Shane is pushing my feet to help me get through then he shoves the gas container that we were carrying through the same hole that I crawled through picture me gas can in one hand rifle in the other hand I'm thinking that Shane is coming through that hole right behind me so I'm walking 10 yards 20 yards 30 yards 40 yards again thinking that Shane's ass is right there behind me no more than 30 40 yards watching my back I would say I had moved about 70 75 yards when I realized I'm not hearing any footfalls from Shane behind me but then limbs begin to snap growling starts trees start shaking and I can hear Shane screaming come back come back hurry up come back was I nervous was I afraid yes but I was more pissed off than any one of those two so I sling my rifle across my back, take that jerry can, pop the lid, hold it under my arm, turn around, start running as fast as I can, spilling gas on the ground all over the place because I'm running back to their little makeshift barrier wall. Now, as I'm running, I can hear these Bigfoots closing in on me from every angle. Now, I admit to you, I started to panic, drop the gas can. Next thing you know, I'm diving on the ground, sliding back through that same hole that I crawled through Shane is grabbing my arms, yanking and pulling me through. Now, on the outside of that wall, I'm searching through my pockets, looking for a lighter, arguing with Shane, saying, hey, man, what happened to the lighter? I'm about to burn all this shit down. When Shane starts to talk system. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Dark Waters, and this is a members-only story. So here's what I'm going to need you to do. You got a whole bunch of options as to how you can deal with this. You can head on over to imdarkwaters.com and sign up for $4.99 a month. You're going to get immediate access. Or if you don't, if you're one of those people who say I don't like to use PayPal, they be robbing and jacking and stealing. You can still head over to imdarkwaters.com, hit the membership tab, click Cash App, send the Cash App. Now, if you read the instructions under where Cash App is, it's a hell of a deal that's running for you. You know what I'm saying? You get free months if you rock that way, because I respect cash. You know what I'm saying? So, either way it go, I got a way for you to access this content. Head on over to imdarkwaters.com and check it out today. Peace.